that like button, share and subscribe. Remember, eagles flies with eagles. All right now, hit the like button, share and subscribe. This is Arthur Oma and remember, eagles fly with eagles. This is by way of Mad TV. But you know Mel Melody got that honorary honorary doctor degree and she deserved every bit of it. But you got this chick named Simone. Uh y'all seen her on Ready to Love. She responded very shady. Anyway, this by way of Mad TV. Looking to start drama. I didn't make a comment on your page. I did not at you. It was on a completely different third party page and you went starting drama. But I stand by what I said, which is that this, in the same way that, you know, people in sororities don't want people wearing their letters who didn't earn them, that if you get an honorary degree, that's fine. You're just not supposed to walk around calling yourself Dr. So-and-so. Puffy doesn't call himself Dr. Combs. How are you going to dictate to this lady what she want to call herself or name herself? I can name myself doctor if I want to. So what? Well, how is that hurting you that this woman has an honorary doctor degree? You can't tell a gr another grown woman what to say, how to think, and, and what they shouldn't call themselves. Now, I, now I've never heard you come forth and say women shouldn't call themselves bitches and hoes. You never have a protest that. But you would protest that a woman should call herself something successful like a doctor. For the very reason. But since you want to take it elsewhere, let's be very clear. You know exactly who I am because your production company oh, wanted to sign me to a production deal for a television. Say that, you know, people in Sorority don't want people wearing their letters who didn't earn them, that if you get. Take it back. All right. Now, Melody, why did you go looking to start drama? I didn't. Okay, this is Simone from Ready to Love, and uh, she's upset because Mary got, because Melody got an honorary doctor degree. This is Simone's, and this is by way of Mad TV. Make a comment on your page. I did not at you. It was on a completely different third party page, and you went starting drama. But I stand by what I said, which is that this. In the same way that, you know, people in sororities don't want people wearing their letters who didn't earn them, that if you get an honorary degree, that's fine. You're just not supposed to walk around calling yourself Dr. So-and-so. Puffy doesn't call and why not? Dr. Holmes for the very reason. But since you want to take it elsewhere, let's be very clear. You know exactly who I am because your production company wanted to sign me to a production deal for a television show. I declined because of your profession. Melody don't know you, girl. Melody has a team. She didn't, you didn't meet with Melody at all. You didn't say not one time that you met with Melody face to face. You ever said not one time that you talked to this woman, even by way of email, text or something. So how is she supposed to know you? Oh, please. Anyway, Melody says she did apply for uh Something, but I guess you could come to Crown's uh, Tilted Crown production if you got a great storyline and pitch it. But she said you have to come with a budget. When Mel Chet Mel said that her production had turned her down because she didn't have the budget. Professionalism and the professionalism of your business. So let's be real. Also, it's real interesting how you be running up Carlos King's butt when you wanted to take this project to India Bravo. You didn't even want to give it to your little buddy. So don't play with me. Play with your kids. Let me say. She said play with your kids. Wow. It's really quickly. Um, you know, let me just say this really quickly. Yesterday, I went live and I addressed something that, you know, like this little comment that was left about me. And again, I don't know if her name's Simon or Simone. I don't know. And I don't know if I knew I'd say that. Y'all know I keep it a buck. 
But anywho, I don't watch Ready to Love. I've never seen one episode. I don't know much about it. I know we're all unowned. That's what that's what I know. Um, but anyway, I see that this morning some of y'all been DMing me because it's been a continuation of it of a oh it's a business thing. Long story short, I really um do not know her. And so today the continuation was happening. So I was like, okay, why is she saying that I'm cast? First of all, my co my production company doesn't cast. We don't cast anybody. Um, I literally had to reach out to my manager, who is also my partner for Tilted Crumbs Productions. And I'm like, hey, do you know who this is? Because she's saying we cast her for a show. Like, I don't know who is this. Let me tell y'all what I found out. And then after this, I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> after this, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna be done. Because y'all don't stay on stuff too long. I say what I gotta say and I move on to what's next, right? So, she and her people submitted for a show for us to produce and for us to shop. And apparently, you know, the budget wasn't there. And that's it, and that's all. Like, I don't cast. My production company doesn't cast. Um, even filming a reality show, I'm filming a reality reality show currently that is hitting a network that came to me with a budget or came to my team with a budget. Has nothing to do. I don't cast. I don't go out casting looking for people to fit a show. Now, if you want to hit me up because you have a show idea and you have a budget, hey, we can make it happen. Let's go, right? Let's let's get to work. But I'm not out here doing open castings for anybody. So I just kind of hate that it's become a, oh, a sore loser. How am I a sore loser? I didn't know who you were. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I didn't even know that. This is Melody Shuri. By way of Mad TV, the haters. So y'all, I, I hope that Fletcher just doing this for TV sake, because why? Why would y'all? They be offended because of my son them not inviting them to this little old fake expo. They are beyond that. But I'm sure they had to do this for filming. Now, I know uh, they, they're hating on those, this couple because they are threatened. They are the power couple. They want so bad to be the power couple on and, and the lead characters in this show. But y'all, this whole, whole event was about the Scott and Tisha. Let's listen to Mel. Neil. I noticed during the Black Expo, we're trying to get, you know, your core group back together. So did you all kind of put the comeback group back together? It's still so this is what we, the fans have been complaining about. There's nothing new. When you put the Scots up there, they, they can't give you anything new, anything different. This comeback is dead. It's gone. The, the, the six people is gone. Melody never coming back, you guys. Some work that can be done, but I think that we, we're off to a good start with it. So is everybody buying in? All six? No. Martell didn't. Yeah, all six didn't buy in. No, of course not. But they were begging her. Y'all just watch how they... they they try to throw shade at Melody when they beg Melody. They begged and begged and begged that girl to come speak with them or just show up. She did show up to come and support them. She didn't even have to do that, but she was a good sport. She sat in the audience. Well, he, he, he really worked the crowd. Yeah. And Mel didn't, Mel didn't speak, but she showed up. So yeah. that was a good thing. Well, well I heard that nobody want to speak because y'all don't want to pay nobody. Oh, we're not paying. Well, we wasn't going to pay them. No, 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 no. Y'all know they just scared ass. No. 
they don't pay no we don't pay nobody they don't even pay their own uh house notes that's why they move every three months they move no they ain't paying nobody but this is crazy it was about giving back our knowledge and experience to the community so nobody got paid no we paid listen what knowledge experience you give it to the community nobody does you walk down the street right now teacher nobody would know y'all but what knowledge are you giving them we see the type of business that you guys run we see how you conduct your business teacher so is your husband no what 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 knowledge would you give them? we weren't we, we, we're we the ones that paid what we did was not charge them to speak so you so you give an event look at me <laughs> you give an event you have to pay something out of your pocket something gotta come out of your pocket and then y'all i heard that they didn't even provide food or, or juices or nothing for these people when they show up oh lord he want that hundred dollars from stormy he was so inappropriate all up in her face just nasty the way he approached her for a hundred dollars she got the now y'all know at least can we do know that canvas uh something that really surface whether it's good or bad but uh her presence there yes her presence there that canvas beauty whatever was at, at least as some kind of name brand name but the, uh, nobody don't know who the oaks is for real you in charge this girl and got out of this girl could have been at home with her baby she got out of her bed and came out there to help y'all out. And then y'all want to charge her a hundred dollars. So you didn't sweat. I'm like, did I hear this right? <laughs> what you did was not charge them for their time to speak. Right. We paid for this out of our pocket. <laughs> and so we're not going to sit back and be like, oh, well, I got to pay you too. And when we come in and say, hey, this is a philanthropic endeavor. It's your event. Do, do you want to have a nice event or what? Or you just want to always, everything y'all and you and your wife do got to be trying to hustle somebody. You can say, oh, I'm out. I don't do nothing for free. And, and I respect it. But what you're not going to do is be part, part. That's what Mel said. And that's what they mad about. Pissed. He pissed because she wouldn't speak. He is still pissed both of them. Part of it, part of it, part of it, and then like, well, I deserve to get paid. I don't need charge for this. If you deserve to get paid. You gotta show me what you've done. And at this point, right now, you know what she done. You you talking that mess? Y'all know what she done. Y'all y'all self call her the marketing queen. And she done, even though she he gonna come up and say that she ain't been and uh got enough experience. She just started her business. But she running rings around your you and your wife. Now, now you ought to be ashamed of yourself to even say that this woman just started her business, but she running rings around you. She done took off like an ego. You may not have done enough to get paid. We've been in our business for a long time. We can speak from a, a position of experience and relevant expertise when it comes to others. Who may have just started their company to me they're in the exact same position of the people that we're speaking to they a solid your business company. because i'm not going to pay you to talk about your t-shirt business now that go to shade that go to that that right there is envious and jealousy i can't this man sitting up there gossiping like a woman his hand moving like a like a woman his head shaking you know how when a sister get kind of upset she started making checking her head and move her hands he just like a queen sitting up there and you got you got nail and chris they on their grown grown person and stuff they're very mature they just sitting up there listening at this child he got a childlike character he is so jealous, jealous and envious of this woman's success. 
I'm saying is that Maurice has been in this business for a long time. Stormy has been in our business for a long time. We've been in our business for a long time. Can you tell me what each one of them do? I mean, seriously, I'm talking about a real business. Having completed anything, what do Marie do? Tell me. I don't know. I know only person I, I might could see clear is Kimmy. She probably getting a drawing checks from her nursing because she did have a career. But what do Marie do? What do you do? When are we going to see this? You're supposed to be in real estate, uh, Tisha. We ain't even saying that. And, and what about your homeboy that you love so much, Martell? Since you're in real estate, you some kind of broker. MSN, MRED broker, uh, BLT, all those alphabets around her name she like to throw up in the air. Ooh, what the now, you're not going to shave the host now. No, I'm not saying that. Host Enterprise was a business. So, they, were, they were professionals. And they you were partners with them. They were around for a while. Where are they now? Whoa, my stove. Where are they now? Right there, with, with, right here we looking at them. You're on their program, especially male. All my, all my tell you was, was with her. But she was the one that did all the brainstorming. All the creativity, all the nights walking the floor trying to make this come a reality. And guess who's, where are they now? You're on their platform benefit. Oh, oh my God. No, I'm saying is that. That's low. Mel sells more than t shirts, so she can give advice to the community. Black also sells t shirts. Mm. Oh my. For me, him making a statement. That was shade. I really appreciate y'all not just holding. You know what? I just hope that y'all don't want to be friends with these people. Look at her. She sent over that grin. She loves it. When, she loves it when somebody's dragging Melody. And that's a, when will you guys get another storyline? Y'all cannot sit nowhere without bringing up Melody. It's the same old thing over and over and over. You always got to have this woman as your storyline. And you sitting up here lying. Teacher, you thought that you had one last hope with her. You and me, one on one with her and beg her, practically beg her to help you out with your expo. And yeah, all right. Keep it under the rug. And if y'all got a problem, y'all yes. say, hey, listen, I got this right here. Let's bring it to the forefront because there's no way in the world that we would intentionally right. offended you guys. But now that we know, we're going to be made more aware and we'll make sure that we take the right steps. Okay. Well, we appreciate that. Right? Well, that, that sounds fair. Because we can actually learn something from y'all. Like, I, I sit back and I, I learn something from Flex and, and we talk. I think you guys are cool. You didn't learn nothing but how to copy off of people. Copy. Nothing original. When will they, when will they bring in new people and get... I want them to start with these two, these two right here. Get these people off your show and uh, Mel, Nell, and uh, Mr. Fletcher should be seen more and put them somewhere, but not on this show. People, and Fletcher wouldn't be like he is if he wasn't with you. Yeah, so this was, is what 29 years look like, babe. Have y'all ever dealt with cheating in your marriage? You see that? She's so envious and jealous. She want to throw a dig at, 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 uh, she want to throw a dig at their marriage, y'all. But she, she'll have a bit of somebody ask her that about her husband and them threesome in the, in the boom boom back room that everybody know about. My soul got a stanky attitude, a nasty attitude in her husband. Always looking for them little young girls. Them little young girls, what he want. <clears throat> They're not share her blessing with no one. Mel don't share her blessing with no one on this show. Why? They have done things to her on purpose, y'all, when it comes to her success. Uh, Blue Fish with the 145. You're so right, Blue Fish with the 145. They tried everything. They tried dragging this woman to the ground. Every last one of them. 
They sat and waited around to see her fall from grace. This woman has endured a lot of hurt and pain. She smiled at their lives, their backstabbing from the front to the back. She stood up for herself and they hated that. She had too much confidence in herself. Well, she rose up and they were going down. They hated it. Well, she rose up and they were going down. They hated it. Yeah. Melody doesn't have time for foolish people. She stopped giving them ideals and they hate this also. Y'all saw what Melody said that uh, teacher was a non-factor. <laughs> When, she, when they were trying to tell her what teacher said, she said she ain't got no problem with teacher right now. It's my soul right now. So teacher, you're a non-factor. She removed herself. Why? Clearly, they don't like her. They expect Melody to allow them to walk all over her. Not. Yeah, they expect for her to continue on uh, feeding them too off the show. She need to get them off them show. They ungrateful. Congratulations on your 10,000 K, Miss Black Titanic. Who is this? Oh my God, I'm sorry. The name didn't come out. The name did not come out. Yes. And then the last one was Gloria 72, 75. I think she was saying that if they think that they were going to Take Mel and Martell Plate. They are double sick. This is your Titanium Spotlight. Love y'all. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Afri Eye Black Inventors. Numerous African American inventors and scientists are included on this list of African American innovators and scientists who have produced a wide range of goods or made major discoveries during their lives. These have ranged from useful everyday devices to applications and scientific discoveries in fields such as physics, biology, mathematics, and medical space exploration, among others. African inventors have suffered from injustice, racism, and persecution, all of which have had an impact on their creativity. Between 1870 and 1940, economist Lisa D. Cook linked lower creativity to violence against African Americans and a lack of legal protections in a 2014 study. Enslavers took more than these men and women's freedom from the time European immigrants forced Africans into the miseries of slavery in the early 17th century American colonies. Over the almost 400-year history of American slavery, these slave owners sought to claim credit for their enslaved innovations, and as a result, there's no way of knowing how many or, in some cases, which ideas should be ascribed to black innovators. Thus started a long history of black innovators who were able to patent their brilliant ideas, many of which are still in use today. Among these, below are a handful of the most widely utilized. Alexander Miles was an American inventor and businessman best known for receiving a patent for elevator doors that automatically open and close. On October 11, 1887, he received U.S. Patent Number 371207. Alexander Miles, the son of Michael and Mary Miles, was born in 1838 in Washington, D.C., near Circleville, Ohio. Miles lived in the adjacent town of Chillicothe, Ohio, but later relocated to Waukesha, Wisconsin, to work as a barber. Elevator doors had to be manually closed at the time typically by professional personnel, because people may fall into the shaft if it wasn't closed, resulting in some tragic incidents. Miles expanded on this system by adding a flexible belt to the elevator cage and drums to notify when the elevator has reached a floor. By using levers and rollers, the belt enabled for automated opening and closure when the elevator reached the drums on the appropriate floors. In 1887, Miles received a patent for this automatic elevator door system and substantially increased elevator safety and efficiency. 
Another comparable system of automated elevator door shutting was given a patent 13 years earlier by John W. Meeker. Alexander Miles belongs to a very small group of African-American scientists and innovators. Heart disease is one of the most urgent medical concerns today, not only because of its effects on the human body, but also because of the wide extent of its impact on the global population. Meet Arthur Zhang, a young inventor from one of the world's so-called poorest countries who invented the CardioPad, a medical device that can be used to perform heart examinations such as ECGs on patients living in remote rural areas and transmit the examination results to worldwide specialists for proper interpretation. Heart diseases, like any other disease, do not discriminate in who they attack, anybody, rich or poor, can become afflicted. Arthur Zhang was born in Cameroon, a country in West Africa, with a population of roughly 20 million people. Cameroon is a third world country, with more than half of its people living in poverty and sickness as a result of civil wars and upheavals. To make matters worse, Cameroon has a tiny number of educated medical professionals, with the majority of them concentrated in Yaoundé the country's capital, and Douala, a port city and economic powerhouse, leaving the remainder of the country with little access to medical treatment. This is the type of life Arthur grew up with, a life of struggle and poverty. Arthur grew up with little hope and encouragement, but he was determined to succeed, a goal that he might one day improve the situation for his fellow Cameroonians in whatever manner he could. With the advancement of technology, however, comes the prospect of new ways to manage cardiac problems for future generations. Arthur's creation not only demonstrates his incredible imagination and ingenuity, but it also demonstrates his sincere desire to assist others. Arthur knows how difficult it is for people in rural Cameroon to get good medical care, which is why when he was given the opportunity to better his life, he made sure to spend it wisely by finding methods to offer others the same opportunity. His innovation ushers in a new age of cardiac therapies that are both efficient and effective, providing everyone an equal chance to live a better life by addressing their heart issue. This is your Black History Spotlight. <laughs>